Oh, here we are once again here at Stratford Newtown. And I actually now want to look at the different sampling strategies that we'll use when we're at our three different sites in Stratford. So like I mentioned in my previous video, we've got here the booklet that students will use during their investigation. At each site, whilst we're here, students will draw on example here, an annotated sketch map of the area. So at our three sites, site one, site two, and then site three down there, they would have to draw a field sketch. Now, lots of people question why we bother collecting a field sketch and why do we bother doing that? Taking a photo is great. You can get a really good idea of what the area looks like, but you can't annotate it whilst you're there. So if you're drawing a field sketch here, um, say for example, we're drawing a field sketch looking um, here, we've got in the background, we can see here, we've got Stratford, um, we've got the regeneration and we've got cranes. You would draw here where we've got our homes here, um, looking at the quality, the building quality of the homes. Then we would have the cranes in the background showing the regeneration in the area. We're looking at bins. It's important to see environmental quality of the area. Is there bins? Are there, is there sanitation in the area? Looking at our places boarded up as an example and you would draw that and annotate that on your field sketch. Now you would do this at all three sites so that you've got a good and clear representation of the area here. It's important, make annotations, take notes when you're doing that because then you get a good flavour as to what life is like here in Stratford. The next one we can look at is this idea of a service tally. Now this brings me on to looking at the concept of quantitative versus qualitative data collection methods. Qualitative data collection is looking at um, interviewing people, opinions. So in this instance, if we were to interview people, you would get an opinion-based argument, okay? But then if you're wanting quantitative, that is numbers. So we could do here, and we've got here a service tally. So we're trying to work out what are the services in the area. So we're, when we're at our chosen sites, we'll tick off, right, we've got a school here, tick. Can we see any leisure centres or sports venues? No, not that I can see. Uh, can we see a place of worship? Yes, behind us here, we've got a place of worship. So we're gonna tick that off. Is there a library? Mm, not that I can see. Health and beauty, pub, estate agent, what have you. And you start to tick off these different services as you go. This being quantitative data collection methods, you'll do this at your three sites to be able to see what are the services at each of your chosen sites. Then, when we move on to our next section, we've got here, um, we've got here a map showing where we are. So I want students to be able to start to plot on a map exactly where we are. What are our three sites? So that we can really start to point out where in this area are we in collecting data. Then what we can start to do is take photographs. It's really important to take images so you can get a clear picture as to what life is like so that when you're back in the classroom, you're able to see what it was like when you're there. So here you would take a photograph and then you would take uh, notes on your location, why you chose to take that photograph, what have you. Every time we do this, it's important that you state if you're taking a random systematic, systematic or stratified sampling strategy. It's really important so that you know exactly what you've done and to be consistent throughout this process to make your data as accurate as possible. We then have what we call an environmental quality survey. An environmental quality survey is a really good way to see what the environmental quality is for the area. And you'll notice we've got different factors. So the first one could be litter. On one side of the survey, you've got there's lots of litter. The other side, there's none. And at each of your three chosen sites, you can do one, two, three, four, or five. And you state if you think that there's lots of litter, that'll be a five, or if there's not much litter, there's a one. But there's a problem with this data collection method. This is very opinion based. Okay, it's subjective. It's your own personal opinion of that area. So to what extent is that an accurate way of collecting data? But then if you do that at each site, so you've got three different sites, you do that at each site and you do that three times, Stratford Newtown, um, East Village and also Hackney Wick, you start to collect data that is quite reliable as you're doing it at different range of sites. So it's a good way to collect data. Um, on top of this, you can also collect more quantitative data collection, that being a pedestrian count. So for one minute, you might be looking in this direction. For one minute, you're going to collect 
uh, count up how many people do you see. Once you've done that, you'll do this three times. Okay, three times, and you'll do that for a minute to make it consistent and to collect as much, as much data as possible. You can also note down how many people did you see? Why do you think there aren't that many people here? As an example, today, we're here on a Sunday. The school isn't open, so it's very quiet. Obviously, we're in the middle of a lockdown, which means that people won't be out. The community centre here is shut. Not many people are out and about, what have you. Um, making it very different to what it might be like on a Tuesday morning at, say, 10 o'clock. And finally, we also have what's called a traffic count. So you count the number of cars you see in the area, exactly the same method, uh, to start to see what the environmental quality is like in that area. So we've got here then a range of strategies that you can use and you do this at site one just down here 100 meters away here at site two here and then site three 100 meters down in that direction and you'd use a range of sampling strategies random systematic and stratified and with that you, you collect it three times you try and get as much data as possible to try and make your data as accurate and reliable as possible at this chosen site so we're going to be moving on to our next site looking at east village uh, where the olympic village is to start to see how does the regeneration change from here where we are in very much a residential area not much regeneration as you can see behind us we've got here we can see the skyscrapers the more modern idea of the regeneration we start to think about why is it that this area is very different to an area like that why is it that regeneration has not come out in the same way. Why is it the environmental quality is very different here compared to the environmental quality there? Okay. One final thing that you could also look at is the idea of a questionnaire. Okay. Very much qualitative data collection. I'm going to consider that in our next video when we're in Once again, some great geography in action.